Okay, Tony here. Um, small update on building the and laying out the battery pack. Um, thought I'd show you. This is the two center plates. You can see the spaces, the metal spaces in there that um, keep the plates apart, and the way that the cells are um, supported within those battery plates. Now what you can also see on here is the fact that I've got um, the connectors worked out. So a little bit of cardboard aided design figuring out the connectors and you can see on this side the outer the, the inner plate here connected through there and for representation purposes here are the connector plates that go on the outer plates um, which are, support the double width uh, headway cells. The outer plates are here. Remember they'll mount up like this in the arrangement. And so you can see the double width um, cells will go through that middle area. And what that's allowed me to do is have battery positive here and battery negative here. So quite close to each other, quite easy for connecting and keeping the wires even. That does mean, however, that the difference, potential difference between this plate and that plate is, um, you know, 69 volts or whatever. So one cell off maximum voltage. So I might be building a plastic ridge up here to keep those plates apart, make sure I don't put my screwdriver across multiple. What I've got is the fuse holders here that I'm planning to use. I may change the cover over, but I'm planning to use fuse holders like this. I'm planning to actually mount them on the end of the pack like this. Mount it on the end of the pack with the power lead coming from the end termination through the fuse and then out from this side up into the main contactors. This will mean that I've got the fuses as close to the battery cables as I possibly can. So um, as you can see, um, got that all laid out. Um, all of the sense wires will have to travel through, you know, between the cells to the plates in the center, um, between the cells here, through to the plates that are going to be in the center between these two plates. Um, and then all the outer sense wires will have to go, you know, onto these plates before going up to the BMS. Now, for the BMS, I've made up this bottom plate here bottom plate for the BMS mount which sits quite nicely and neatly on tap top of the cell pack and the BMS itself will then mount in a box built onto that. Here's a cardboard mock-up of the BMS box. Note that this one's a little bit wider than it needs to be. Um, but I'll have, you can see here how much it overhangs, but it'll basically have locator plastic so the, the sides of the, the pack will go down slightly past the top of the, the, the battery mounts and hold it into place. I'll then use, I'll tap holes in the um, battery plates and screw them to locate it into place. So the BMS will be mounted onto the top of the battery pack, so it then is part of the battery pack. The current plan is to also mount the contactors up there. Contactors will be mounted up the top, just like that. You'll notice that I've got two contactors, and in the center, they're connected together electrically. 
this is where the battery positive will terminate. From this contactor will be the controller power when it's enabled and from this contactor that will be enabled when I'm in charge mode. This contactor will be on when the bike is ignition is in the run position and this contactor will be on only when the bike ignition is on park. So it will ensure that I put the key in, I turn it all the way around the park, the charge is on and there's no way that this contactor can be on so that the drive system can be on. So those are the two contactors I'm going to be using. They will actually mount there okay and they then end up being in this portion of the frame here. The controller, represented by this cardboard arrangement, will be mounted not directly on it, but above it, in that position. That will still fit underneath the tank, and will still give clearance for the wiring out the back. Unfortunately, the controller I have has all of the connections on one side. So, battery in is on the same size as the motor out wires, so everything's down at this end, or everything's up at that end. I'm planning to make everything down this end so it's closer to the motor which will be around here. The way the controller will actually be mounted onto the bike will be by an aluminium support bracket. So that support bracket will be mounted across onto these horizontal rails and come up and the controller will be mounted on top of that that should give enough space all around that for the tank and I should be able to use those holes down the front to direct some airflow through through and past the controller to keep it cool.